in the Lord's presence. And as we sing, let us acknowledge that our God is great and He deserves all the glory, all the honor. And so raising our hearts, raising our voice, raising our hands to Him, to glorify Him, here we sing, we pray. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you There is no one else like you. There's so many parts of our life, so many moments in our life when the Lord has intervened, where the Lord has touched, where the Lord has blessed. We stop a while and we look behind and we recall how the Lord has intervened, how the Lord has blessed. It is true that when we go through what we go through today, we are troubled, we are disturbed. But the Lord is asking us, can you just stop a while and look what I have done for you in the past? Can you stop a while and acknowledge how I've intervened in your life in the past? Do not forget what I have done. Do not forget my interventions. Do not forget my hand of mercy. Do not forget the times when I raised you up. Acknowledge what I have done. Look back and you remember what I have done for you. He told the people of Israel, look back and remember the Red Sea. Look back and remember the time when I gave you manna. Look back and remember when I gave you water to drink. Look back and remember how I provided you with land. Look back and remember. Look back and acknowledge what God has done for you. You are great. You are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you, you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. The Lord is telling us, be grateful. Have gratitude in your heart rather than complain about what you're going through today. Can you look back and have gratitude to what Jesus has done for you? Irrespective of what your situation is today and now. To be a grateful nation, to be a grateful set of people, to be a grateful generation and acknowledge whatever we see around us and whatever we are today, it is because of what the Lord has provided. It is because of what Jesus has done for me. It is because the Lord was there at the right time, at the right moment, in the right place. And that is why I'm here today. You are great, O oh Jesus, and I acknowledge that greatness. For you are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great, you do miracles so great. There is no 
provided for your interventions oh jesus for your mercy that you have flooded our lives with for the grace that you have led our family with oh jesus we praise we worship we adore you jesus hallelujah praise you jesus we adore your holy name jesus we glorify we bless you praise you jesus we lift you lord thank you lord for everything we've got we adore you Thank you Lord for all your blessings. You are great. Jesus. For you are great. You just make me feel so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You just make his merciful touch he's there with you he reminds you of all that he has done for you rukshi zevia santil Marianne Elizabeth His mercy his grace is touching you even now Tina Never be desperate the Lord is with you someone having a rotor cuff injury the lord is with you you're struggling at work because of that injury the lord is with you a person who is suicidal thinking about what your business holds and what the future is you don't see a way out the lord tells you do you not remember what i've done for you someone here who wants to speak for Jesus but you don't know how the lord's blessing you i will put words into your mouth someone's praying for a child who struggles with breathing the lord touches the prayers that you offer this child struggles to sleep at night the lord's touching lord you speak to us let your word touch us let your word fill us Let your mercy fill us, Jesus. Give us the grace to glorify you in all that we do, in all that we say. Speak, Lord. We, your children, are listening. 
A reading from the Gospel according to Luke 17, 11 onwards. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Mother, pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kindly be seated. Hallelujah. 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 Good afternoon, dear friends. Praise God. Hallelujah. You had a good lunch? Stomach full? Now it's time to? I don't know if it's because of force of habit. But it's pretty shame, shameless to actually say it out. Praise God. This is, not a, no, this is not a session I actually like, or this timing is not a time I actually like. So uh, usually if you would recognize on the Sundays, uh, the one day retreat, I usually, I'm the one who puts the timetable. So I conveniently place Father Joby for this talk. <laughs> uh, because he's got a very pleasant face with his wonderful smile. You know, but then he told me, you know, that pleasant place and the wonderful smile is putting people to sleep. <laughs> and he said they need someone scary, you know, their face who's scary. So he said, now you go. Yeah, so that's how I've come. So Praise God. So I'm hoping and praying that you will not sleep during this session. We are preparing ourselves for, for the adoration as well. We pray for the Lord's deliverance and the Lord's grace. No one thing that when you come into the Lord's presence, all that deliverance, all that grace does not remain just with you. It spreads into your family. Because the Lord can never see you apart from your family. So whatever you experience in God's presence, a portion of that will always go to your family. Always. Irrespective of if they even believe in God or no. A portion of that will always go to your family. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So maybe you will be disappointed that your husband or your wife didn't come for the session or your children didn't come for the session and you're thinking, you know, I'm, I'm sad they didn't come. Maybe your husband thought to him, is thinking to himself he has outsmarted you and he has stayed back and he's managed to get rid of you and you are here while he is there. Uh, don't let it boil over inside your heart. The Lord said, you are no longer, you are no longer one. You are now? Huh. If you start seeing it that way, then there is no hope. <laughs> you are no longer, you are no longer two, but you are one. So when the Lord sees you as one, a portion of that blessing, a portion of that grace if he likes it or he doesn't like it, it will still go to him. Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
So know that within your heart that when Jesus sees you here, the Lord sees your family as well. And sometimes you should take pride in believing that the Lord is, needs an instrument of grace to flow into my family. And as long as it takes, I will agree to be that instrument. It might take your whole life's journey for you to be that instrument. And that can be hard. I remember once uh, mentioning about a couple I met somewhere when I went for a retreat. And um, the husband the husband was helping out with the arrangements for the retreat. So I told the wife, she was sitting next to me. This is the day before the retreat. So she was sitting next to me and I told her, um, you're very blessed. You know, see your husband is helping and you're very blessed. She said, Father, that is 38 years of prayer. She said he was a terrible womanizer, a horrible person. 38 years I prayed to the Lord. And then he came for a retreat by mistake. And that is how his, his life changed. So I tell that um, a few times and I told it during one of the retreats. And someone came and told me, Father, I can't wait 38 years. <laughs> It is a pain waiting 38 years. But maybe at times you will have to have this lifelong instrument that God needs to penetrate into your family, to penetrate into your marriage and bring healing and deliverance there. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Father Joby would have come in the morning and uh, he would have spoken to you about the deliverance that Jesus gives. Yes or no? Yes. Very good. Praise God. So you were awake during his session? Yes. Because I'm going to ask questions connected to it. <laughs> you okay with that? Yes. Okay. Praise God. <laughs> so he would have spoken to you about the deliverance that the Lord gives. Now, when the Lord gives deliverance as Psalm 50 verse 15 tells us, and we will read that again, Psalm 50, verse 15, 5015. Call on me in the day of trouble, I will... Psalm 50, Psalm 50, verse 15. You'll have no intentions of opening that Bible? It's still going to be new as ever? Oh, you haven't brought it. Okay. <laughs> then, then read from here. Call on me. I will deliver you. You call on me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. And you shall glorify me. Praise God. One thing is assured. The Lord will bring deliverance. Either immediately or in the coming days there will be deliverance that the Lord will give for you or your family. It will take place. The Lord says, when you call to me in your day of trouble, I will, I will deliver you. Praise the Lord. Now, when the Lord delivers us, it becomes essential. That is an integral part of the deliverance that Jesus gives us. The Lord's intervention in our life. An integral part is never be ashamed of speaking about what Jesus has done for you. Never be ashamed of speaking and declaring what Jesus has done for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That becomes very essential in this journey of deliverance. That I promise never to be ashamed to speak about what Jesus has done for you. What Jesus has done for me. In Luke chapter 8, Luke chapter 8 verse 26 onwards, we read the incident that takes place where Jesus heals the Gerasene demoniac. A person who was tied in chains outside the city. He was not allowed in the city because he was violent and he was tied in chains outside the city. And Jesus has an encounter with him. Jesus meets him 
and immediately the demons within start speaking and they say what have you to do with us jesus the holy one of god have you come to destroy us and then in their conversation with jesus jesus asks them what is your name they say we are a legion we are a big group and they plead with jesus and say send us into the swine so they go into the swine the swine goes down the cliff and gets drowned in the lake and then all the people get to hear about it they all come they find this they find jesus there they find this man sitting he's in his right senses he's clothed and in his right senses and the scripture says they were afraid they were afraid does that sound strange yes or no yes. hallelujah yes. hallelujah does that sound strange they were afraid let me give you an example suppose um if if father michael is possessed with demons suppose father michael is possessed with demons i'm scared about the ones who you know were sleeping and suddenly woke up at the last part of the sentence <laughs> they are the dangerous ones they'll hear you know father michael is possessed with demons you'll go back tell your parish priest father you should pray for that priest <laughs> he's possessed with demons so suppose father michael is possessed with demons and and i'm violent would you be afraid of me surely you should be afraid of me uh if i'm if i'm possessed with a demon you should be afraid of me but if if suppose father joby does a prayer of deliverance over me and the demons are taken off and i'm sitting calmly over here should you be afraid of me no then why is it here this man we can understand when he was violent and possessed with demons that they tied him outside the city gates and and they were afraid of him we can understand that fear but now he's been healed the demons have been taken out of him he's sitting there clothed in his right senses he's quiet and the word says they were afraid isn't that strange hallelujah what were they afraid of they were actually afraid because jesus had come outside the city gates and they lost a lot of swine so now they are thinking if this jesus gets inside the city what more will we lose that is what they are afraid of they are afraid of what they are going to lose and this man whose life is touched so deeply he's not like the others the others won't feel what he feels for him he's got his life back so he tells the lord lord i will follow you and i will come with you isn't that a beautiful thing yes or no yes, yes. praise the lord yes. he tells jesus i will follow you and i will come with you and what does jesus say come with me no the lord tells him you shall not come with me you go back to your home and you go back to your village and tell everyone what i have done for you go and tell everyone what i have done for you hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. i have delivered you you go and let everyone know that i have delivered you do not be ashamed of acknowledging when jesus gives you or your family members deliverance never be ashamed of speaking what jesus has done for you sometimes it is it is a pride within our own hearts that stop us from declaring to the world what jesus has done for us especially the deliverance that jesus has given us it is the pride in our heart that stops us from doing it we hide it 
we hide it because of the pride that is connected to maybe a painful or a shameful past a deliverance is required when there is a part of our life that is a mess and jesus intervenes in that mess now if i have to declare to the world what jesus has done for me then i have to let the world know what the mess was i don't want to tell anyone about the mess because we like presenting picture perfect ideas about ourselves to everyone around us isn't that true yes praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah we have the online streaming every morning and during the online streamings a lot of people are touched and so we'll get uh we get a lot of testimonies that people send in and then we read the testimonies um uh, most of them we try and read it um sometimes we'll get testimonies with people um first statement will be father i want to give this testimony but i want to remain anonymous i don't want anybody to know someone will know my name someone will connect two and two and they will know what has happened i want to remain anonymous i want to present a picture perfect idea of myself and my family to the world you know in india we we have this uh, uh we have this idea when uh when the children get results especially when they get good results they they um the parents come and give um sweets they distribute sweets do you have that culture here very bad you should have it <laughs> it will benefit people like us <laughs> so uh they they generally do that they will um they will buy sweets and they will distribute it i know that uh there are parents over here who are now pretty much praying for the o level exams that are going to start tomorrow onwards so some desperate parents have come for prayers and uh, there are certain other desperate parents who are sitting back home seeing that the children study um you might not have this happening to you but in india i remember one lady who came and she was distributing sweets because she said my son has got over 95% marks in india they use this habit of distributing sweets is also because they get an opportunity to tell everyone you know my child has done very well so um when you give the sweets they'll ask why the sweets and they'll tell oh this is why the sweet my son has done very well so one of uh, i remember a person coming and distributing sweets and said my son has got more than 95% marks everyone was very happy till someone uh, opened their mouth and said last year in year 9 didn't he fail <laughs> and immediately the sweet box closed <laughs> and she said no 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 he was okay he was okay she doesn't want to tell that part of the mess that part of the mess i remember when i when i used to give a few uh, tidbits of my testimony in uh, in different places one of my priests came and told me my priest friends came and told me father don't say these things don't say especially in things connected to my studies where i was a mess at one point and what the lord did he came and told me don't tell these things people will think you're dumb <laughs> i said that is what the testimony is that i was dumb and still the lord did something with me and that is where we have a problem somewhere the pride within us i want to to show this beautiful picture of myself and i don't want anybody to see the mess that was there but the miracles take place in the midst of the mess If you're not messy there is no need of a miracle only when you're messy is there a need of a deliverance praise the lord praise hallelujah the lord. then don't be embarrassed about that mess don't be embarrassed about telling people how the lord intervened in your life to help you out of that mess praise the lord praise hallelujah the lord. hallelujah you saint paul flaunted everything that he went through in his life st paul we know was a person who persecuted the the christians and he wasn't a person who hid it 
You know, when St. Paul initially had the Damascus experience where he fell off the horse and he had this beautiful vision of the Lord and he was blind for some time, uh, the church uh, tells one of the Christian brothers, you go to him, the Lord is asking us, asking you to go to him and to pray over him. And immediately the reaction is, who is that? Is it that Paul? I'm not going there. I know this chap. He has been killing all the Christians. I know this character. So they know the history. Now, St. Paul is very clear all through his epistles. He's very clear. He speaks about it. He tells what his past is. He tells all the credentials that he has in his past. We would read some of that in Philippians chapter 3, verse uh, 4 onwards. Philippians chapter 3, verse 4 onwards. He says, I too have reasons for confidence in the flesh. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. I'm circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew, born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. I have all these credentials. Some of those credentials are messy as well. Some of those credentials are persecution of the people. But, he says, what I boast in is the deliverance that Jesus has given me. How the Lord intervened in my life. That is what I speak about. That is what I tell. That is what I proclaim. I'm not ashamed of what the Lord has done for me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We read from Philippians chapter 3. Let's read verse 7 onwards. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 onwards. 7, 8, um, 7, eight, 7 and 8. Let's read. Are you sleeping? Sleeping or awake? Awake? Then read like you are awake. Yet, whatever gains... Everything I've regarded as a loss because of Christ. Continue, verse 8. More than that, the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Continue. I regard everything else as rubbish, whatever I've lost, that all those credentials that he mentioned about, all that for me is rubbish. Now I boast in what Jesus has done for me. If the Lord brings deliverance into your life, do not keep it hidden within your heart. Flaunt it. Flaunt it. Tell the world what Jesus has done for you. Acknowledge and tell the world how the Lord has intervened in your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't be ashamed of your past to an extent that you keep it hidden. And now you're presenting this beautiful picture of yourself like as though you earned it. God gave it. In his mercy and with his grace, then do not be afraid to tell the world what Jesus has done with me. Hallelujah. 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 That is a part of the deliverance covenant. That is a part of that deliverance covenant. Call to me and I will deliver you. And then you shall glorify me. Speak to the world of what I have done for you. Hallelujah. I remember coming across a young 15-year-old girl who had come for our retreat. I met her the second time around when she came for a Thanksgiving retreat. But she had come for um, our retreat around a few months before she met me. 
and that is when her life changed. She was addicted to drugs and to cigarettes at age 15. So think how young she was studying in school. And she came for the retreat. She was delivered from that addiction. And after she went back, um, so when she came for the Thanksgiving retreat is when she's telling me what she did after she went back. She went back to a school and she started telling people about what the Lord has done for her. She cannot say it inside the school because the school rules stipulate, stipulates that she is not permitted to talk about religion inside the school. So this 15-year-old young girl stands outside the school gate after school hours when everyone is coming out. She's the first to get out of the classroom. She comes and stands outside the, the school gates and she's telling people she's meeting all her school friends about her story, about how she was a drug addict and how she was addicted to smoking and how the Lord delivered her. And I asked her, aren't you embarrassed? Won't they make fun of me? She's fun of you. She said, I don't care, Father. I don't care if they make fun of me or no. What Jesus has done for me, I cannot keep quiet about it. Ask ourselves and see how many times the Lord has delivered us and we have chosen to remain quiet. We have chosen not to speak. Never be ashamed of what the Lord has done for you. Hallelujah. 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 When you are not ashamed of what the Lord has done for you, that is when you are called to glorify God for His intervention in your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can't hear you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You glorify God when you speak about what Jesus has done for you. You are glorifying God. You're glorifying God. And that is important. We read in Romans chapter 16, verse 25. Romans chapter 16, verse 25. Can you read that? 16, sorry, 16, verse 27. Romans chapter 16, verse 27. That's the last verse of the letter to the Romans. Yeah, let's read that loudly. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever glory shall belong only to God Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 and 21 Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 and 21 Ephesians 3 verse 20 and 21 let's read now To him, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He who can accomplish in me far more than I can ever imagine. He who can accomplish in me far more than I can ever imagine. To Him be glory forever. Hallelujah. 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 Glory belongs to God. To what God does for me. And I acknowledge the deliverance that I have received. I'm not worthy of that deliverance. My family is not worthy of that deliverance. My family or me are not worthy of God's intervention. And when I have experienced God's intervention and His deliverance, my heart cannot but glorify God. My heart will not keep it to itself my heart will glorify God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Glory shall belong to no one except God. Glory shall belong to no one except God. You 
who have experienced that deliverance, don't try to steal that glory. You who have experienced that deliverance, do not steal that glory. Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At times we can have a tendency to steal that glory. I did something. Even something like coming to the retreat center. I made an effort. Oh Lord, this is my last chance. I've come all the way from Colombo. I woke up four o'clock in the morning. I got onto that bus that stops in every little stop on planet Sri Lanka. And then it reaches here three hours later. I come over here, Lord. They said there is breakfast. That miserable bun. Half of it is only air. And then I'm sitting through all this. It's hot. I still don't go back home. I sat. And those two boring priests. I sat through that as well. So Lord, look kindly upon me. And then you get touched. And then you go back and you tell them, you know, I woke up four o'clock in the morning. I came here. I sacrificed and sat. You are stealing the glory. You are stealing his glory. I did. I, me, my. I have made an effort. I have come over here. We do that so often. I did the novena. Nine days of the novena I did. All through Lent I fasted. I sacrificed so much. I woke up three o'clock in the morning. I woke up and I prayed the divine mercy. I, 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 glory me. Don't steal God's glory. We don't merit it. It is his mercy through which we have received his deliverance. Mercy is not merited. Mercy is gifted. In spite of who I am. Hallelujah. 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 So often we have this tendency, what I have done. You know, that's the, that's the Pharisees, that's the Pharise- Pharisaic um, mentality. In Luke chapter 18, we have the Pharisee and the tax collector. You remember that? Oh, I can't hear you. Do you remember that? Yes. yes. Luke chapter 18, verse 9 onwards, we have the Pharisee and the tax collector, the parable. They are both there. Jesus describes the uh, parable and he says, there is the, the tax collector and there's the Pharisee. The Pharisee stands in front of God and he says, verse 11, verse 11 and 12 we read, thus praying, thus praying, he says, God, I thank you that I am not like other people. I am not a thief. I am not a rogue. I am not an adulterer. I am not even like this tax collector. What am I? Continue, 12. I, I fast twice a week. I give tenth of my income. I, I am good. I am good. I am spiritual. I am holy. I am stealing God's glory. Glory shall belong only to God. Don't you dare try to steal God's glory by saying that I've done well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Sometimes we think to ourselves, my effort and I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to fast and I'm going to make it happen. Like one person came and told me, Father, I'm going to fast and I will make Jesus change his mind. (laughs) 
I will make God change his mind. My effort. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when I was studying in uh, school, I was in year 10. I was doing it in the hostel. And my hostel mates once told me, um, do you want to see God? And they said, there's a way to see God. And they told me, you take your um, sarong. You know the sarong that you have? So you take the sarong, the cotton one, and you take it and start rubbing it on your forehead a hundred times. And they said, you will see God. Now I know they were pulling my leg, but I thought to myself, I will show them. I will do it and I will see God. And I'll make God appear. And I started one, two, ten, twenty, thirty. I reached hundred, took off the, the, the cotton cloth and there nicely the whole skin has peeled off. <laughs> Next two weeks I walked around with this big, big black thing on my, on my forehead. But in my mind it was, I will do it. You know, sometimes we have this attitude in spirituality. I will do it. I will make it happen. I. There is no I in this, in, this, in this relationship with God where I say, I will make it happen. You cannot make anything happen. You cannot make anything happen unless and until in His mercy He gives it to us. Whatever we have, in His mercy, He gives it to us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The moment the eye comes in, I am now starting to take glory for something. At some point, I will think to myself, I did well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. You know, sometimes there have been times when, when, when I've... Uh, now, when I've prepared myself for the talk very, very well, you know, I've done it in advance and I've put in all the points and then I come and I forget everything. Sometimes I hear Father Joby, so when we have the morning mass, he, he'll have his little, little chit there nicely stuck on the, on the, uh, on the missile and and then he goes on, and after the homely and the mass is over, we come to the sacristy behind. And then he'll take up his chit and he says, I didn't say anything that was there in this. <laughs> and sometimes the Lord will make us do that. Just to let us know, not by your merits, by my mercy. Not by your merits, but by my mercy. So that you will not steal my glory. Praise the Lord. It happens multiple times in the scriptures. Once when the people of Israel were going out for war, 10,000 of them were there. And God's first, I think it was 30,000 that were there. And the Lord reduces the number, reduces the number. And then the last bit of seething that he does is when he tells, now you tell the people to go and drink water. These soldiers, let them go and drink some water. And a lot of those soldiers went, they, they took, there were 9,800 of them, um, 9,700 of them. They took the water by their hand and they drank it very decently. 300 of them bent down and lapped it like dogs. Which one would you choose? We would choose the ones who are decent, isn't it? Who would choose uncouth people? Who don't even know how to drink water, drinking it like dogs. Who did God choose? He chose those 300. And he tells why. He says, if all these had come, you people would have stolen my glory. I will do the work and you're taking the glory for it. Be careful, never take the Lord's glory. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And then remember the Lord uses instruments in order to deliver us. And glory shall not go to those instruments as well. Glory belongs only to God. Even the instruments of God shall not take even a small portion of that glory. It is a sin. It is a sin 
to give glory to an instrument of God for God's work. They are instruments, fine. But the glory cannot belong to the instrument. Glory can belong only to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We read in Acts of the Apostles chapter 16, Paul and Barnabas. Acts chapter 16, Acts chapter 14, sorry. Acts 14, verse 8 to 14. Paul and Barnabas, they have, um, they have gone into a land and they see, this, they see this crippled person sitting on the floor and they look at him and they speak. Paul tells him, stand upright on your feet. That man stands upright. Everyone who saw it, they looked and they said, the gods have come amongst us. And they all bow down and start worshipping Paul and Barnabas. What does Paul and Barnabas do? Come worship us. Come bow down in front of us. Come glorify us. That is what Paul and Barnabas say. Right? They tore their clothes. And they said, how dare you do this? We are not gods. We are like you. Glory shall belong only to God. No instrument of God shall be given a glory that belongs to God. Be careful about that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After this, after this session, we have the adoration. Father Joby, lead you all in the adoration. And during the adoration, you will get touched. You will get blessed. And after the adoration... You will go and see Father Joby standing there and you will come, oh, thank you, Father, so beautiful. And if he stands there and he looks at you and says, yeah, good, good. I'm telling you, stay away from the man. Because that man has got his, his, his wired wrong in all the wrong places. Don't worry, I'm not telling it in secret. I know he's sitting behind. If there is anything you experience from the Lord and you see, you see a person, be it a priest also standing in front of you and soaking in that glory, I tell you, stay away from them. And if you have a tendency to give that glory to a human person, then change your ways. Glory shall belong only to God and no one dares steal that glory. When the Samaritan woman got touched by Jesus, she had that long discussion with the Lord and she got touched by Jesus. She goes back into the village. The same people who she didn't want to see before. She goes back into the village. She's touched by the Lord. She goes and tells them, I found the Messiah. And they all come to Jesus. And they experience the Lord. And they go back and they tell her, not because you told us, but we went and experienced him ourselves. The Samaritan woman gets no glory for that. She's just an instrument. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord will bless you with many instruments. Praise God for those instruments, but don't glorify them. I remember when uh, COVID was raging and we had the online streaming for Melbourne. And um, I was giving those retreats uh, online from the Holy Family Church in Dufton. And um, so we would get a lot of people sending in the testimonies of healings that they received. And one person who sent the testimony uh, told the testimony of how she suffered for many years and then got touched and healed. And at the end, uh, she has written, so I thank you, Jesus, and I praise you, Jesus. And the next line, thank you, Father Michael, praise you, Father Michael. And so I knew I had to respond to it. So I responded to that email and I said, Sister, what you have said is totally wrong and it is sinful. And then she responds with the next email and she said, You're a very rude priest. <laughs> I said something good and is this how you respond? And I replied by thank you. But that is true. Somewhere there is this culture 
of glorifying human beings. Be careful. Glory belongs to God. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for the instrument. But glory shall go to no human person. Hallelujah. 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 How do you glorify God for the deliverance that he gives you? You glorify God by the lives that you live and respecting the deliverance that he has given you. Respect what he has done for you. We read in John chapter 8 about the woman who was caught in adultery. When she was caught in adultery, she was brought into Jesus' presence and everyone held a stone in their hand and they said, according to the law of Moses, this person should be stoned. And the Lord said, the first person who does not have, the person who does not have any sin in them, let them cast the stone. Let them cast the stone. All the stones went down. And then the Lord looked at her and said, did no one stone you? She said, no. And the Lord said, good. Now go back home and commit adultery again. Go back home and commit adultery again. No? What did he tell her? sin no more respect the deliverance that I have given you today sin no more we pray for the Lord's deliverance if we want to glorify God glorify God by respecting the deliverance that Jesus has brought into your life or into your family don't go right back and place yourself in the same situations that got you into trouble in the past. I remember a person who came for one of our retreats. At the last day of the retreat, this was a full day, retreat, full week retreat. The last day of the retreat, Friday, he comes to me and he tells me, Father, this retreat saved my marriage. He said, we were, we were going to break up. There was going to be a divorce. I was straying in the marriage. I was messaging people I shouldn't be messaging. And I was messaging things I shouldn't be messaging. On WhatsApp, this was what I was doing. My marriage was on the verge of a breakup. This, this retreat has saved my marriage. And then he took out his phone, a nice, good smartphone. And he told me, Father, I'm going to do something. He put it on the floor and he stamped it and stamped it and stamped it. And he cracked it. And I'm looking and thinking, that's a nice phone. <laughs> and I asked him, I told him, your contacts are there in this. And he said, I don't care. He said, the people who matter to my life the most are inside my house. Now the ones who need to contact me, they will find a way to do it. But I don't want the contacts I had before. If that means that I don't have this and I break it, it's fine. And he put it into my dustbin. For the next four days, I can see it in my dustbin. Till my dustbin was cleaned, I can see it over there. And all the time I thought, what a good phone. <laughs> but in his mind, the deliverance that the Lord gave me and my family, I've chosen to respect it. The deliverance that God gives to you and your family, choose to respect it. That is how you glorify God. Don't go and place yourself right back into the mess from where the Lord pulled you out. You know, sometimes, sorry I'm bringing the dogs into the picture, but sometimes you, if you have pet dogs, you see your dog is dirty, and then you give your dog a nice bath, you know, you wash them, and you put the shampoo and everything and they're smelling so beautiful and then leave them and what do you think they go and do they'll go right back into that dirt and they will roll all over it and get the mess again sometimes we are like we are that way the Lord pulls us out of the mess and we are like a rubber band you go right back be careful with the deliverance that God has given you and glorify him 
by the way you live that deliverance and that expression and, ex and that uh, experience the Lord has blessed you with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we all stand? Let's close our eyes. And we offer ourselves to the Lord. And we pray. All glory and honor, O oh Jesus, belongs to you. We sang that at the start. You deserve all the glory, O oh Jesus. You deserve all the honor, O oh Jesus. And I am going to speak about what my Lord has done for me today. That is my prayer. I will speak and I will let the world know the mess that I was in and how the Lord has lifted me out of that mess. And I will not give glory to any human person, nor will I take it myself, nor will I attribute that glory to God's instrument. I thank the Lord for that instrument. I thank the Lord for my faith, but the glory shall belong to the Lord. You deserve all the glory, Jesus. You deserve all the honor, Jesus. So I offer myself and I pray. You deserve the glory. Let's sing it once again and tell the Lord for all the deliverance that you're bringing into my life. You deserve the glory, Jesus. You deserve the honor. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship and speak glory and holy name. You deserve the glory. 